board and then we will go. So good evening. I'm Brenda Harrington, program librarian at the Belfast Free Library, and I want to welcome you to tonight's program, an in-depth look at the Belfast Bicentennial Banners with Megan Pinette, president of the Belfast Historical Society and Museum. As I'm sure many of you have noticed, the banners to celebrate the state of Maine's bicentennial were installed on six buildings in downtown Belfast and on the east side last August. They include a variety of vintage photographs celebrating Belfast's past. Tonight, we will learn the history and meaning of the images and their relevance to the project. Before I turn the mic over to Megan, I want to remind you to please keep your mic muted. If you have a question to please type it into the chat and we will get to them at the end of the program. And as I just mentioned, the program is being recorded and will be available on the library's YouTube channel. So with that, welcome Megan Panette. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good to see you. Yes, so I am very pleased to, to be hosted by the uh, Brenda at the Belfast Free Library. I'm going to do this, uh, minimize it. Yeah, I can't see you now. Um, so this is very nice. It, I mean, it, it's hard to believe that it's been over a year since these banners have been up. But um, it's a rather interesting story about how they came to be. And as we all know that Maine's bicentennial is now 200 plus one. So a lot of the um, original events and celebrations planned for last year are back on, you know, for this year. So let me figure out how to get to the next slide. Ah, so there we go. So what happened was, um, you know, the Maine Bicentennial Commission was offering, uh, you know, small grants, large grants to towns, committees, organizations, uh, the city of Belfast, um, uh, organized a committee and we uh, put together, I was on that committee and we put together a grant, which we did get, but I was on this committee with um, the city of Belfast, Thomas Kittredge, economic development director, Belfast area chamber of commerce, Steve Ryan, our town Belfast, the creative coalition, Belfast historical society and the Penobscot Marine Museum as well. We were all in this together. And the banner design was completed by Norma Whitman. Installation was provided by Whitecap Builders and Hammond Lumber. And of course, all the owners of the buildings on which these were installed played a big role in getting this successfully installed and up for everybody to enjoy. So this, is the, uh, this was the uh, goal, five to 10 large banners around downtown to celebrate Belfast history as part of the main bicentennial. Because uh, that also, in addition to it being Maine's 200th, it was Belfast's 250th anniversary of our founding. So part of the project design is banners should evoke Belfast history and growth, businesses of our past, and the people who created and grew our city. Each banner can be 150 square feet or larger and designed, sized, and shaped to fit its intended location. Banners are comprised of heavy, heavy duty exterior grade vinyl with an expected lifetime of up to five years. Although these installations may be of a shorter duration, we're actually still talking about what happens when this year runs out. So the city was awarded a grant for 3000. It was matched by the city for $5,000 and banners started to be installed in May of 2020. And it took, took a few weeks for them all to, to, to appear on buildings on the east side. So there's actually a rather interesting little backstory. Um, some of you may remember that, uh, oh, let's go back maybe four years now. This side of the Belfast police station on Church Street was damaged by an incredible windstorm. And there was a gaping hole in the side of this building for years and the city council kept talking about it waiting for their insurance company to pay for you know improvements and it was councillor michael hurley's idea that maybe one day we could get a giant banner to cover the hole well just about the same time that we were thinking about going for this grant for other banners the city actually repaired that wall so we had to quickly look for another location because we didn't want to put up anything on this brand new wall that had just been repaired so we uh, talked to um, the lovely folks who own the um, the opera house building 
this is the um, this is the design that Norma Whitman came up with, and it is the view down Church Street towards Maine. And I'll go into the individual photographs in a moment. But here is the banner as it appears on the end, the southern end of the Opera House building. And this one gets quite a lot of attention because Church Street is very busy, as we know. So what are we looking at? Well, Belfast celebrates Maine's bicentennial 1820 to 2020. And um, between myself and Kevin Johnson, we provided Norma Whitman with a lot of different photographs. She was actually the one who sort of thematically arranged photographs so that, you know, if this banner was on Church Street, we saw a Church Street scene. If it was on the waterfront, we had a waterfront scene, you know, downtown on the Masonic building, that's a downtown scene as well. So we, we really wanted to give that sense of, or she wanted to give that sense of place. And we all said, yeah, that's a great idea. So this is the, this is the view of Church Street circa 1895. And we are looking at, um, on the left-hand side, it says Leon Sasparilla Company but that building is no, also known as the Pierce's Block across from the Opera House building. In this photo, Leon Sasparilla Company is located in the building. The Progressive Age newspaper occupied this space later in time and that business and the entire building was destroyed in a fire in 1899. So the new building that we see that houses the police station is a, is a relatively you know, new building, I think put up in like 1915. Uh, and the background on Main Street is the Harridan Block, which is, that's the original building. It was later enlarged in 1911. So this is a, a, from the Penobscot Marine Museum collection. And these are George's boys. They appear a slightly different photograph on the banner, but this is one from our collection. Uh, George Robertson, he's there to the far left in front of his business, which was the city job print located in the Opera House building. This is prior to a camping trip to Mount Katahdin, circa 1935. George Robertson ran the print business in the Hayford block and also ran the Belfast Boys Club. George is standing to the left of the truck. So what they did is they loaded up this truck with all their camping gear and supplies and headed up to Searsport, got on a train and headed you know, to a, a far distant location. This is something that uh, George had actually done when he was a teenage boy. So he wanted to carry that through you know, to, to young men of you know, his, his new era there. So here they are getting ready to load up their truck. And then another one of the photographs in this banner is the police department circa 1940. Uh, that is Chief Francis X. Pendleton in the center. He served, believe it or not, as both fire chief and police chief for many, many years. What's interesting about Chief uh, Pendleton is he never learned how to drive and he never carried a gun. So, you know, when we're having a mass shootout on Main Street in 1934, he's running to, to the location, you know, unarmed. And anytime there was a fire in Belfast and he got the phone call to get ready to go to the fire, he would ring a bell up in his daughter Agnes's bedroom. She would get up, get dressed and drive him to the fire. So, you know, God bless Francis X Pendleton. So here's the, the Hayford block circa 1948 and everybody seems to love the traffic dummy that's you know in the middle there, also known as the silent policeman, uh, the dummy. This is an Eastern Illustrating and Publishing Company postcard. And then the most wonderful photograph that is probably the most talked about, which is in the middle of this banner, is the tramp chair. And it's a very long story, but I, I condensed it down to like three sentences. So this is the tramp or hobo chair with a young boy posing inside circa 1925. The tramp chair was invented by Sanford J. Baker of Oakland, Maine in the late 1800s as a means of ridding towns of indigence. A man or a woman or even a child could be locked into the chair and wheeled to the outskirts of town if they proved unable to support themselves. Now he made three of these prototypes took one to the state legislature at the time. They laughed him out of the room and said, no, 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 this is not a good idea at all. 
So he had, um, I believe he made three of them, one of which ended up at the old Samoset Resort down in um, Rockland. And another one, uh, we don't know what happened to, but at one point, uh, a, a very clever fellow here in Belfast who collected really odd objects having to do with crime, actually uh, had the uh, tramp share on display in front of his business on High Street. And I also understand that it was down in um, the former police station when it was located in the lower level of City Hall. So there's that tramp chair. There is one that still exists. It's up at the Bangor Police Museum. So here's the Key Bank banner. And this is, has some wonderful photographs. Also shows you, you know, the view of, you know, City Hall, the, the courthouse and the post and post office square. So this is, this is the banner as it looks on the Key Bank building next to the Federal Express box. So that is George O. Dunbar, Belfast Steeple Jap Jack, excuse me, atop the courthouse circa 1920. Uh, he was uh, atop the Waldo County Courthouse. You can see the bell and the cupola both the bell and the cupola have been removed from the building. I'm not too sure when. The building to the right of the courthouse is City Hall. So that is the Church Street side of City Hall. And in the early 20th century, it was not uncommon to find Dunbar scaling the larger buildings in town just for fun. We do believe that in this case, he was sent to the cupola to check on the weather vane, which might've been struck by lightning. He might have also been up there painting the cupola as well, but he, he stood there on one leg and the photographer, M.A. Cook, snapped his photograph. This is the, um, the view of the corner of Main and High Streets before that Key Bank building was, was built. Uh, this is circa 1904. This is the Alden D. Chase uh, store, which he shared with his wife. Um, painted and he had he has obviously his wonderful um, you know description of what he sold painted on the side of his building and then in 1909 city national bank which had recently been reorganized from belfast national bank which was located across the street purchased this building raised it and built a new bank that yellow brick which includes the old bank's massive concrete and steel vault with william that's a great photograph that we have of uh, the men standing around. So this is a Mr. and Mrs. A.D. Chase, Chase's building for many, many years. She sold the women's goods. He sold more of the household goods. This is one of those wonderful, probably one of those old home weeks that were held uh, between like 1900 and 1901, 1903 in um, late August, uh, when which uh, folks who had moved away were enticed to come back to Belfast for concerts and picnics and reunions and big parades. And just about every single building in the downtown Church Street and other you know, residential streets in Belfast were covered with this bunting. Uh, bunting was hired from Boston. It came in on two freight cars on the railroad and just enough for everybody to put up on their building. So that's what's going on here, except for that poor little boy in the front who just seems to be quite, quite annoyed that he has to stand there. So this is the Masonic building before, and this is the banner that did go up onto the Masonic building. <clears throat> and so we have a view as if we were at the, at the well, the Masonic building looking high street towards Primrose Hill. Uh, we got the Colonial Theater. We have Miss Betty Perry, who was the first broiler queen in Belfast in uh, 1949. And then um, the, the wonderful uh, circus, broiler day parade, broiler day barbecue, and then the pumping station and at Little River. So here's the banner as it looks. Actually, this looks more like a, the mock-up that Norma did for us because we tested them all out to see how they would look. And, and then the owners of the buildings also wanted to see what they would look like. So this gave them a good idea. 
And that there's that nice view looking um, High Street. The Windsor Hotel is on the right hand side. Um, the Masonic building in the middle and then what I always call the city block is at the corner of Main and High. Still dirt roads. We didn't really get dirt roads until well into the 1900s. And this wonderful photograph that's from our collection is the circus parade up Main Street circa 1900. It was um, in front of C.F. Thompson's on Main Street and in this view is an Indian elephant followed by a Bactrian two-humped camel. This is from the Charles collection. And what the uh, circuit by street. A little bit. Pump house, waters, Maryland, fire. This is an east. So here she is, our Miss Betty Perry, broiler queen of 1949. And this is Belfast's longest running festival, began in 1948 as Main Broiler Day. This photo is from the second festival and she is our first queen, and, but we do not know the name of the chicken. So Betty was you know, from very humble beginnings in Lincolnville uh, and then was you know, thrilled to be chosen the broiler queen. It gave her an opportunity, A, to get you know, a uh, better wardrobe because she was sent out by the, um, the poultry industry to go to places like New York and attend, you know, other events that were poultry related. So her world totally opened up for her, you know, just beco by becoming, you know, the main broiler queen that year. So here's the uh, world's largest chicken, chicken barbecue also from that year of 1949. That year was very well recorded. And these are the pits fashioned of concrete blocks, which were used to cook over 3,000 pounds of chicken. More than 2,000 people flocked to the festival to sample all you can eat for $1, which is a pretty amazing thing. So that is, that is one of the festivals in Belfast that a lot of people still talk about and speak um, nostalgically about how we should try to bring back you know, the broiler festival one more time real community effort to put this together. Here's the Colonial Theater circa 1935. Uh, the Colonial Theater opened on April 10th, 1912. The original theater burned in a spectacular fire in 1923 and was rebuilt in less than a year uh, to its current incarnation. So we just love this photograph with the giant Mickey Mouse so, you know, they ran shorts and then you, know, you could basically spend your entire day in the movie theater watching films and shorts and newsreels. And then on the lower end of Main Street, uh, where John Holmes was very, very amenable to putting a big banner on his large brick building. So this is on the Consumers Fuel Company. I believe this is another mock-up that Norma did for us to get, to get an idea of the scale. And this is the actual banner that is on that building, a view down Main Street, the steamer Belfast coming in, and then a wonderful scene of the, um, the Eastern Steamship Company, the wharf and the freight house. And then a couple of scenes of uh, people. It's always good to show people in these photographs. So what we're looking at here, so here it is actually on the building, whoops. So this is a great photograph, Lower Main Street circa 1895. So some of you may recognize um, the building on the left-hand side, which says Fish Market. Oh, that is, you know, I think that is now Tracy's Diner or Tracy's Diner is a building just up from that. 
but then there is that really large building in the middle, which is now an empty parking lot that actually was a building known as the Coliseum because it was so large. Um, on the lower level, down below in the cellar, there was actually a bowling alley. And then up on the upper floors, there was a carriage repository and you know, storage for your sleighs and your carriages, depending on the season. And then on the top floor was a roller skating rink with seating for 500 people. Uh, indoor events were very popular in Belfast, especially in the winter. So here we have a nice, looks like a late winter scene, you know, the horses and the carriages and the sleighs are out and somebody coming up the hill. That is Mr. Warren Fahey, if anybody wants to know. And this is the steamship Belfast coming into the wharf. She operated on the Bangor of Boston run from 1909 to 1935. And uh, everybody would love to watch her. She, she blew her whistle just as she came around the bend through the monument. And then of course she's carried passengers, mail and freight. And she also in later years carried cars as well for nominal fee. And this is the uh, steamship wharf where the Belfast and any of her sister ships like the Camden or the Rockland would have come into. And this is actually one of the more interesting photographs, which I didn't, you know, this is from the Penobscot Marine Museum. And at first I thought, oh, this is a great photo of the wharf and some people in boats. And then Kevin wrote me the, uh, the description of this photograph. And it turns out there's a baptism going on. Uh, let's see, I can get my cursor uh, right here. There's somebody being dunked into the water. These folks are, stand, are, are here. They seem to, you know, they've got their oars out. There's people up here on the wharf as well watching. And then of course, a very large crowd assembled on the shore to watch this baptism. So I'm wondering if there was more than one to draw out such a large crowd, but that wharf no longer exists. It, uh, it later morphed into an entertainment center uh, where uh, various actually nationally known bands played there. And it also became a roller rink before finally falling into disrepair. Oh, during a hurricane that, that snapped it backwards in, I believe it was 1957. And then this, the city finally condemned the building and actually had it burned. And there is footage, film footage of that burning of the wharf that's um, on a YouTube channel all about Belfast. And then we get, these are nice ones from the um, Penobscot Marine Museum. There's the steamship Belfast again in the middle. Uh, these are the, uh, to the left are the female employees of the Eastern Illustrating and Publishing Company. You know, that was the first real photo postcard company and just happened to be based here in Belfast, Maine. And the company founder was Herman Cassens. And I believe they are also sitting in Herman Casson's Maxwell Briscoe, it says, in 1914. And then just a nice party on somebody's to the right, a nice party at, on somebody's uh, boat, and it, it's just called a yachting party in Belfast Harbor, 1901. And I do love that casual dress that everybody is decked out in for this, for this event. And of course, ladies never went anywhere without a hat. So these are very nice to be part of that, that banner. And then uh, down on the Front Street Shipyard Spar Shed, uh, they very nicely agreed. And this is right along the Harbor Walk as well. So a lot of people can actually see this. Uh, this, is, this is what was finally put up there. Um, and I should give you what's really nice is, uh, I'll show you what we, what's going on. Uh, at first, uh, Norma did several mock-ups for us using uh, you know, photographs from all of our collections, as well as some, uh, out, like the lower, this one, this photograph here is actually from the Peggy McKenna collection of children running across a fro frozen lake. But we all liked, you know, this one was you know, a, a good image of the, um, of the waterfront, you know, and, and for some reason she she chose winter as her theme for this one, which we, we said, oh, you know, that's okay, but let's let's see what else you can come up with. So she did come up with this one, 
you know, so a little closer to our theme of, you know, shipbuilding, uh, you know, a, a launching party going on, another launch here, and then another one of these great Peggy McKenna photos of the kids jumping off the pier at, at Bayside. We said, well, that's still not quite what we were looking for. So she did finally come up with this, this uh, grouping, which is the boat launch, a boat under um, construction, and then another boat launch happening here. Um, I'll get to these photographs. So the first one is um, the, well, we think this, this is the view of the ribs of the four-masted schooner Pendleton Brothers under construction in 1902. Uh, somebody once told me, uh, you know, you know, for a three four-masted vessel, it took hundreds of acres of trees just to build one vessel. So when they talk about a vessel being made of wood and made by hand, you know, this is what they're talking about. And it's so nice to have, you know, photographs of these ships under construction to really get an idea of the, the craftsmanship and the skill that was required. So this is right along, um, you know, along the Front Street waterfront to the Southern part of Front Street, I should say. And this is the launch of the Pendleton Brothers, October 22nd, 1903 by the Pendleton Yard. And all of these photographs, these were actually all in that location that is now the Belfast Yacht Club. <clears throat> and uh, you know, the, the area that Paul Naren is, is developing, you know, with a marina and, and boat sails as well. So that all happened in that area. And I always love it when they're decked out with their flags and, you know, everybody came out dressed for the, for the, for the launching and hopefully everything went very well. And then um, she worked on, we decided, well, you know what, you can't really leave out the east side because, you know, what, what, you know, we need to include the east side. And then we all kind of put our heads together and we, some people on the committee drove up and down Route 1 on the east side, and they really couldn't come up with a building large enough, you know, to have, you know, maybe one of the vertical banners. But we approached um, Central Main Power to install one on their, their chain link fence, you know, that is right on, right on Route 1. Uh, and then we had a hard time coming up with something that would sort of describe the east side, which we thought of being more agrarian and farms. So this is this lovely photograph of them, you know, haying. And then another one here with the, the oxen, they must be, um, you know, harrowing or, you know, cutting a, cutting a line for their farms. So that was her first, that was a mock-up that she came up with. And then this one was originally, then we, then we simplified everything. We realized, boy, you know, people are going by this at, 35 miles an hour, they're not really going to stop and figure out, oh, there's hay going on and there's an ox, ox team going on. So we, uh, this is a Penobscot Marine Museum image, uh, and it's a colorized version of one of these bird's eye images of looking uh, from the east side to the west side of Belfast. And this is a view from 1877. So what's interesting about this photo, these are the ice houses that were down there at the mouth of the Goose River. We've got a steamboat coming in here to the unimproved wharf, and then lots of vessels, sailing vessels. This one looks like it's waiting for its mast to be um, installed. And then, uh, you know, down, downtown Main Street. And then there is a train. There is the train running along the waterfront here. And then just a slight indication of the, um, the lower bridge right here. And all up in here is um, Primrose, Primrose Hill is in this area. And then that sign blew off. <laughs> we had a great wind uh, coming up right up Penobscot Bay. The sign blew off It ripped uh, not too badly, but needed repair. And then we went through great permutations while, while that sign was being repaired. You know, what do we put up next? And, and Norma came up with lots of different color ideas, came up with lots of themes. We all, you know, we discarded a few as being, you know, still too busy. She tried really hard to get the essence 
of you know what was going on in Belfast from the east side. So she actually did take that lithograph and then you know put this wonderful welcome to Belfast, the biggest little city in Maine. And that is what has now been put up. It now does have, um, oh, not sheetrock, you know, uh, fiber, uh, wooden panels uh, that now, thanks to Hammond Lumber who donated them, you know, now blocks the wind. So this, this banner will not rip off that fence one more time. And then a lovely, I love these silo, silhouette, where's my cursor? These lovely silhouettes, you know, of downtown you know, evokes the city at night. So that was, but let me show you how this one came about. Because in 1915, the Chamber of Commerce or what, what Board of Trade at the time uh, had someone paint this banner, which greeted folks as they were coming off the steamships. This is Belfast, the biggest little city in Maine. So that was the inspiration for this. We're also known as the busiest little city in Maine, but I thought that this, this uh, billboard, you know, kind of summed us up quite nicely. So this is at the foot of Commercial Street, um, still a sort of an empty area. And you see all this wonderful lumber just piled up down there, washed in from the ocean. And here it is today. This one was April 15th, 2021. It was finally installed. So we once again want to thank White, White Cap Builders, volunteers, and Hammond Lumber for making sure this does not blow off one more time. So we're wrapping it up here, and I want to thank you to everyone who made this innovative project come to fruition. Please visit Maine 200 Bicentennial. They have a good website. They're selling lots of cool product, project, products as well and I uh, could keep you up to speed on what, what the plans for the next few months are coming down the pike. Uh, so that, yes, that truly is the end of my, uh, my program. So uh, if there's any questions, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this screen. I'm gonna minimize this. And if you've got any questions or comments, I'm going to attempt to do this like that. And if there's any, questions, comments, uh, or written questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. So, so I don't thank, know how to get thank that. You so, well, thank you so much, Megan. Do you want to just stop sharing your screen or do you want to leave it up at all? I just took it down. How's that? Okay, well, we can still see it. So um, I just wanted to okay. ask if anybody has a question to go oh. ahead and put it in the chat. Um, and, and I'll minimize it. Yeah. No, what you need to do, Megan, is stop share if you want to stop it. Okay. So truly, just if I do, thank you. There you go. Stop share. Oh, yay! Okay. Nice. Now it's just Hello, like everybody. in the habit room, and people can ask questions. Like the old days. Yay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got a question for you in the chat. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> a comment. Uh, nice. Jane. All right. Jane Hold on, there's my pal Jane. Look what I'm holding up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also want to take this wonderful opportunity to remind you that in the midst of a pandemic, Jane McLean and I managed to get Arcadia Publications to publish, print, and bring to the museum 500 copies of Images of America, Belfast. So I see a lot of familiar names here. I'm going to assume that you all have your copy of the book, but be aware that we are selling them at the museum as well. They are also available at Left Bank Books and also at um, Arcadia Publishing and Amazon.com. So you can't go wrong with this book. We cover the early stages, stages of Belfast um, populations to 1953. So it's a good read. And I have to really give a good shout out to Jane, who did most of the writing on this. So clever girl she is. <laughs> <laughs> I gave her all the information and she turned it into English. How's that? 
So, and I want to thank her husband, John, who also did all the wonderful high resolution, resolution scanning for the book as well. I could not, we could not have done this without their expertise. So go get your book if you haven't. And it makes a great gift. Thank okay. you very much. Oh, <laughs> so we have another comment. Thanks for the great presentation. And we love the book. Um, Megan, I actually have a question. Excellent. So the okay. banner that blew down, where is oh, that? Right. Where is that now? Oh, oh, I didn't have that in there. It's now on McLeod's. Um, oh, that's right. You it's did. On the, it's, it's, it's on the red building at McLeod's now. Okay. Yeah, it was repaired at Arts Canvas, uh, very nicely stitched up. And then with Michael, Councillor Michael Hurley and a, and a couple of volunteers, got it up on there because we, we you know it was still a viable you know banner to use and we had another pretty one to put on the other one um one thing that we don't know quite yet i mean the plan was for the to be up in 2020 up in 21 and you know right now now city is saying that we're taking them down you know mid-october uh for you know after columbus day but you know, the committee, the big committee needs to get together and figure out, you know, what would, what do we really want to do with these banners? They actually are guaranteed for like five years. So I don't want to see them rolled up and stuck in somebody's barn. Right. So. Just want another comment. Someone, Debbie says, great presentation. Thank you for putting it together. We love the book. So Good. you have a, your fan base here today. Which is I can see that it's very nice. <laughs> Thank you all. This is a you know a big change from our programs at the library, but you know Brent, Brenda nagged me all last winter, and finally you know she came up with a brilliant idea that we, let's do the banner project. So I said yes, let's let's go for it, and here we are. Yeah, I hope you all still enjoy them. They're they're proving to be very popular, and I think this is a good you know because I did people were asking about you know, the tramp chair, what is that all about? So I, this was a good way to sort of explain, you know, the images that we that we chose to be on these banners. Yeah, I think so. So thank you. I'm glad I bugged you. <laughs> yes. It was a little more aggressive, wasn't it, though? <laughs> no, no, no. So um, is there anybody, if anybody else has a comment or a question, you certainly should unmute yourself. Uh, Brenda, I couldn't yeah. send a chat, but... Maybe Megan could review location of all the banners again where they are. Okay. Just systematically. Okay. Let's see if I can remember now. So we've got uh, one one on the McLeod's building right on High Street, the big the red warehouse. Their their building, where right. High Street McLeod's, on the east side the central main power chain link fence. And then we come into downtown. There's one on the spar shed at Front Street Shipyard. One on the Consumers Fuel Building. One on the Key Bank Building facing um, City Hall. And another one on the Opera House Building. And, and one on the Masonic Building. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, you know, very nicely spaced. Luckily in town, we have a lot of real- Which one is the Masonic building? Oh, uh, the that's the view the of high, high, high Street. I don't have it right in front of me, but that was the one, the view of looking into High Street and up Primrose Hill and um, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, and I have to give a little shout out, a plug for another, you know, uh, you know, there was a lot going on this winter, despite, you know, the, the end stages of a pandemic. I am actually um, a co-curator of the, the new Waterfall Art Show, photographing Belfast waterfront then and now. Uh, there's a lot of images from the, our collection, the Marine Museum collection. It was curated by Kristen Robinson. It has a lot of her early 1980s photographs, you know, that sort of inspired this show. And then she invited other, other photographers in this area to, you know, submit 
their images of the Belfast changing, changing Belfast waterfront. So it's a really good way to get, even if you've lived here all your life, you know, to remember what was there, um, you know, and what is no longer there, but you know, what is, what is there today. And that show opened a couple of Fridays ago and is up through the end of August. Waterfall Arts is open, I believe, Tuesday through Saturday, 11 until four. Right. So go check it out. All right. Thank you, Megan. Good plug. That's a good plug. Right. And visit the Belfast Museum too while you're in town. <laughs> right. What are your hours? Our hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 11 until four. Okay. I have a wonderful new intern this year, Haley Black, who is proving to be very, very, very good. So it's it's nice to have her on board. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, thank you so much, Megan. I'm gonna stop recording. We can chat. Okay. Off, but I'll turn the recording thank off.